Eternal Masters, what's that? Well, according to a leaker on the internet, it's a set coming out this summer. It makes a lot of sense to me that Wizards would actually release a set like this. They released Modern Masters, and it was a great set. Had a lot of wonderful cards in it. But this comes with some issues. First of all, what is Eternal Masters? Is Eternal going to be a format that we're all going to play now? Is it going to replace Legacy? I would guess yes. It seems to me that Wizards is trying to dig themselves out of the reserve list hole which they've dug themselves into. Basically, if they flood the market with great old cards that are only playable in Eternal, then all of a sudden they have a new format that everybody's going to enjoy playing that likes older cards, and then they don't have to pick up all the dual lands and things like this. This will cause a lot of issues though. Issue number one, the dual lands will probably drop in value because Legacy will be even more obscure than it is now. So who's going to play with you when you're playing those cards? It's almost like playing banned cards in Legacy. If you go to a Legacy tournament and you have Gush in your board or Gush main deck, then all of a sudden you can't play with those guys. Well, it's going to be kind of like the same thing. Only if you have Taiga in your deck, you're not going to be able to play with them Eternal Masters guys. So um, there's a couple things about this. Number one, should you unload all of your expensive older cards that you might have? Um, take Force Will, for example. They're like around $100 a piece. When Eternal Masters comes out, I think it's probably going to be around $50 a piece, maybe 35 to 50 would be my guess, is where it'll eventually uh, end up. I do think that the Zendikar fetches are going to come down. I think, obviously, all the cards I already mentioned are going to come down. I think the Shocklands might go up, because you're going to have players that are going to want the Shocklands in both their decks. They're not going to switch out card. The packs, I would assume, are going to be at least $10 a piece, like Modern Masters as well. So, I'm really thinking that this is going to replace Legacy. I think that they're going to get away from the reserve list that way. They don't have to touch it. Meaning the cards on the reserve list, unfortunately, are going to drop in value. It's just what it is. Prices are determined by tournaments and what is played and their rarities. Now, yes, the cards are going to be even more rare because every year somebody spills Diet Coke on a Mox or something like that. You know what I mean? But the point is that when people aren't playing those cards, they're not going to be worth that much. Take Field of Dreams, for example. When Land and Control won at GP Oklahoma, all of a sudden they tried to make a legacy version of the deck. And Field of Dreams went from like 80 cents to $80 overnight or something ridiculous. Why? Simply because it was thought that it might have been played. I think that if you are not super attached to your Force of Wills and things like that, this might be a good time to unload them. They're certainly not on the reserve list. They've already been reprinted once as a judge promo and everybody knew someday they'd get reprinted. This is the time to unload them if you're gonna do it. Zendikar fetches will go down. I think Shocklands will go up. I think all the old cards that they decide to reprint, and there's a lot of them. I think that they're probably gonna reprint Sensei's Divining Top. That makes a lot of sense to me. Look at your legacy decks, look at the money cards in those, and think, what are they gonna reprint? Because if they're adapting this to a reserve list minus, then what decks are still going to be here? I want to talk about the vendors who knew about this. If someone is leaking this information to the vendors so that they can sidestep the basically the stock market of magic, that's pretty much the equivalent of insider trading. It is wrong and it hurts the game. If Vendors want to stockpile hordes and hordes of Force of Wills and sell them at outrageous prices and then get a tip, hey, we're going to reprint these, so let's unload them real cheap, or not real cheap, but at a discount, Christmas special, whatever you want. That's not fair. It's just gouging money from their player base and from their customer base. I think it's wrong. On the most recent modern ban of Splinter Twin, some people are accusing the company of banning Splinter Twin because they wanted to sell their new set. Their new set has a lot of things for this new Eldrazi deck, and the Eldrazi deck supposedly would have lost to Splinter Twin. If you assume that Wizards actually did that, if they actually banned Splinter Twin 
to sell the current packs. They are acting like a large corporation that is there to gouge money from their customers. That is a terrible, terrible idea. But there's competition out there. Force of Will has been outselling Magic at many places. That's a scary thing for a Magic player. We have to have other people to play with. Just because I am not going to stop playing Magic doesn't mean 10 other people aren't. And what happens when you show up to a tournament and there's no one there? And this is what's going to happen to Legacy. The Legacy format will still be there, but when are there going to be tournaments? Especially when Eternal takes over. My advice would be to consider selling some of your pricier cards that are about to get reprinted and then buying them up later. You can be well ahead of the curve on this one.